guys. Welcome back and for those here for the first time, greetings. I am Macon, yours truly, and we are dedicated here on this channel to all things design from interior to fashion. I thought in this video I would share with you my tips, not rules, because I don't believe in interior design or fashion rules. All design should be subjective and personal, so tips I follow when designing my home. Let's get started. Modular sofas. As I have referred to in my previous video, I have spent most of my adult life in large metropolitan cities in apartments. It is not only easier with moving, but also more design versatile and flexible to own a modular sofa. So this can be categorized as practicality and flexibility. I own sofas that are easy to take apart and put back together as well as to use a single seaters and beyond, depending on my current wishes. As a child, I was allowed every six months or so to rearrange my room. Bed moved to another wall, as well as my dresser and my desk and other decor. I guess this practice stayed with me throughout my life so far. Sometimes you just need a change or room to add newer pieces of furniture and decor. Sofas can be expensive. Why not invest in one that can change with your needs? If you haven't seen my part one and two videos here of vintage sofas worth the money, please watch because I suggest many modular flexible sofas. Next, one color that is mirrored at least once or twice more in a space. This repetition creates a sense of visual balance. And this goes also for pattern and style, meaning one postmodern piece should be counterbalanced with another, or one Victorian with one or two others. Color to color balance, material to material balance, style to style, design to design. Adding on to this concept, each room can have a different color scheme, but one favorite unifying color should be able to be used in each room. For me, that is the color violet purple, my favorite color. These chairs, originally in my living room, now in my bedroom, and have been in my beauty room because even though each room harnesses other color schemes, this violet fits in each one. That gives me flexibility to utilize different furniture and decor pieces in each area of my apartment. Again, honing on flexibility, but also balance. Okay, next. Same color for walls and curtains. Personally, I do not like contrasting curtains to my walls. I enjoy my artwork to bring contrast and when the walls and curtains are the exact same colors, this creates an uninterrupted visual and solid canvas for not only my art, but also my decor and furniture to shine. Okay, I think we're on tip four now, and this is the perfect segue to art. Major tip, real art, only real art. No disrespect, but a lot of these print art pieces, not mentioning any company names, but I have in other videos. They just look so cheap. Just refer to my original bathroom makeover video here, link also below. You guys, real art does not have to be expensive. I am not telling you to go out and buy a Picasso. Thrift markets, vintage markets, eBay, Facebook marketplace, estate sales, you can find so many real oil and acrylic paintings or lithographs and photography. And if you have a little budget, support your independent artists or small independent galleries. Major tip, under the table, off the record, I will deny everything. 
Smartphones are so advanced now. Make a screenshot of your favorite photography, enlarge it in Photoshop to the dimensions you wish, and the pixel to 300 or even better, 400 DPI, and have it printed out digitally on real photo paper. Real photography art for under 20 bucks. Okay, maybe 50 to 100 bucks if you print an oversized print. But anyway, real photography art. Next tip, acrylic in every room. Again, the reminder that I have always lived in apartments, meaning limited space. One material that has become my best friend is clear acrylic. I achieve the actual purpose of the furniture piece, whether storage area, shelf space, or seating area without blocking or crowding my living space due to the clear visual aspect of the furniture piece. It is see-through, so never blocking your visual view and keeping your space open and airy. In one pic here, you saw how an acrylic chair offered extra seating but did not block the view of the fireplace or how clear dining or seating chairs around the table allowed the table to be the clear center of focus. Okay, now on to tip six. Splurge on your major seating elements. For example, dining chairs or sofas and save on diverse tables, meaning dining room tables to bedside to accent tables. Seating elements endure much more straining and stress with everyday use. You may find something at a still seating element, I mean, but invest in restoring and recovering slash reupholstering the piece to ensure you have a long, enjoyable time with it. Best investment for your money. Okay, this will be a very controversial subject, but no TVs. I understand that this is a lifestyle decision, but I do not enjoy having to make sacrifices or adjustments to my interior decor to accommodate a large ass television. Not when every streaming series or movie can be watched on my computer. Sorry, do not understand people with these massive 100 inch TVs in your living or family room. Okay, I can understand a separate designated theater room but my living room and especially bedroom, no sir, no ma'am. Next, we're going on to symmetry, meaning balance on each side of a sofa, bed, wall, or room. But let's specify, symmetry does not always mean the exact same. I'm going to show you an example where symmetry, in my opinion, was a little too much. Many of you may recognize these pics as the living room of Kelly Wersler. Believe me, I hold Kelly in the utmost highest regard and see myself in no way close in the vicinity of her realm of expertise, but no one is perfect. Too many perfect pairs of symmetry starts to elude monotony. Must a pair be identical twins or are fraternal twins, okay, or just close siblings? A balance is ideal, but identical is not a must. This brings me to a proverbial interior design question slash dilemma, where I currently stand myself right now. To have identical nightstands or not to have identical nightstands, that is the question. Okay, let's go on to tip eight. This can be wrapped up under a big, large bow of functionality. Consider my dilemma with the nightstands. Until now, I have always had identical ones. The only slight difference in my new ones currently is the marble tops I had cut. Of course, they do not have the exact veining pattern. Going back to practicality for a minute, I had extra storage in my bedroom sideboard for magazines, books, extra charging cables, my computer when I used it in bed, but it was impractical to have my bed linen way in the front of the apartment in the closet next to the bathroom. Practical for towels, but not practical for the linen, which plus was also on a higher level in the closet requiring the ladder to reach everything. I not only gave space in my sideboard for bed linen, but also for my pajamas 
and sleep where? Hello, where else do I need these things but in my bedroom? Take in mind, my clothes closet is not in my bedroom. I can get dressed after bathing further in the front of my apartment, but I don't necessarily want to walk to the front at night to take off my clothes to put on my pajamas. So everything I hid before in that sideboard is starting to pile up on and around my nightstands. Pure mess, pure chaos. I want new nightstands with drawers. My husband does not need drawers and loves our current nightstands. I am now trying to solve this problem of aesthetics, but for each when it comes to function to be happy. I know that was a long explanation, but basically functionality should be equally considered along with aesthetic design. Do I like the design of this piece? Does it fit in my design concept? But most important, can it also double to solve storage problems? Can it offer me a functional aspect? My Chinese case piece in my hallway fits aesthetically to my design, gives me extra decorating, vignette, surface space, also accents my art there, but all my business files, tax receipts, and office supplies are stored in it. My mirrored cabinet here in the living room houses my husband's stereo system, his record player, his vinyls collection, plus our printer. Looks great and has a specific function. Do not waste space on decor that doesn't help your living purposes. The next tip, collections. Even if you are not a maximalist like I am, this can apply to you. When I talk about collections or vignettes, I mean something personal. Things that bring you joy, things you have collected from travels, things that represent past memories, etc., etc., etc. Many have a misconception that a vignette or collection means multiple pieces. It can literally be one item, literally one item, but that one item or a collection of multiple items should be something that you connect to, something that brings you joy, is a part of your personality that when someone walks into your home, they can identify you. And you yourself, most important, can identify you and you feel comfort and solitude. My career has involved a lot of traveling and being away from my home, sometimes three months at a time. I have always made sure that my home felt like home when I finally was able to walk over its threshold again and that I belong there. My vast photography collection hanging on the walls, my favorite vintage teacups in certain vintage markets in the cupboard, family photos, the collection of textiles from certain bazaars that make me smile when I remember being there and buying them, a lamp that I saw in a cafe where I sat alone having a glass of wine and after researching, found and bought the exact lamp. Things that define me and my time on earth. Okay, only two more tips. We're getting there, guys. I believe each room needs a kitsch or whimsical object, something different or unexpected. That may be a piece of furniture or a decor object. My 1930s antique Murano chandelier is not something one expects hanging in a kitchen, but for exactly this reason, I hung it there as well as for my love of crystal and Murano glass and to bring a little glamour kitsch to a room typically defined to a very specific function or my modern spun chair which I'm sitting in right now next to my over 150 year old fireplace. My guests always love playing in this chair. This can also go back to your collections. You may be like turtles. Feature a collection of whimsical turtle figures, something that says you. Okay, the last tip can only be defined as feeling. In the end, how do you feel? If something is just not right, Play around with it. I am always changing my living space. And I don't mean throwing things out and buying something new. Change the color, rearrange something, eliminate something, or just add something. Right now, I am not only battling the nightstands, but also my seating area in my bedroom. It's just not giving me that feeling 
and it's just not practical or functional. But I am working on it with trial and error. Don't worry, I will show you in an upcoming video. You guys, think about subscribing and hitting that notification bell. I would love to have you stop by again. Tell me down below in the comments your favorite tips for decor in your home. Or even better, your favorite collected item that brings you joy or defines you. And as always, yours truly, heart make it. Bye. A screenshot of your favorite chocolate. Oh, I still keep fucking out. No, 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 no. Breathe. Okay. Smartphones are so advanced now. Make a. I'll get it. <laughs> oh, that was long. This side of my ass is numb. <laughs>